Hey folks, I'm 10 Hundred. I'm at my shop Statics here in Seattle, Washington in Pioneer Square. Today I'm making a little video about photographing your artwork. We're gonna take a couple of my paintings and we're gonna photograph them, bring them into Lightroom, touch them up a little bit, and then shoot them over to Adobe Photoshop and touch them up a little bit more. It's like a three-step process, but it's pretty chill. So today I'm gonna to be shooting with a couple of different cameras. I'm gonna be shooting with my nice Sony A6500, which I just got to replace my stolen Sony A7 Mark II, which sucks. This will actually be my first time shooting art on my new Sony A6500, so it'll be a learning experience for both of us. And then the other camera that I'm gonna be shooting on is my iPhone 7 Plus, because I realize a lot of artists don't have a nice camera and they just have their phone so use what you got the phone's gonna be great for sharing on the web and maybe not as great for printing your photos but you got to use what you got when you're shooting your photos you want to find a good location to shoot them my favorite location is to shoot outside not in direct sunlight so you have like lots of natural lighting cloudy days are awesome because it basically turns the whole world into a big diffuser box, a nice soft box with this nice soft light. I live in Seattle, so there's plenty of cloudy days, but there's also plenty of rainy days. And because of that, I end up shooting inside a lot. Plus it's just easy, like I usually have a place to hang a piece of art on my walls, especially here at Statics because I have a whole gallery here. So even though shooting outside is a little bit better, we're gonna be shooting inside for this video because that's what has to happen a lot of the time. Just try to find a spot that has good natural lighting. I got a lot of big windows in here. I also have a lot of fill lighting since it is kind of a gallery space there's like tons of lights in here so you just want to make sure you have nice even lighting with not a lot of glare on your painting especially if you have a glossy painting oh sorry about my hands they're covered in paint i've been painting murals all day so yeah let's go ahead and shoot some photos with the sony a6500 shoot some photos with the uh, iphone 7 plus and then we're going to take it into the computer and edit it a little bit Got him! So we have taken our photos and imported them into the computer. And we're gonna go ahead and launch our first application that we're using, which is Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. And this is gonna open. And the first thing that we want to do is import our photos into our Lightroom library. So we can go to File and choose Import Photos and Video. You can also do this by hitting Shift Command I, or if you're on a PC, Shift Control I. I put them in a folder called Pix2. So we're going to go ahead and click right here. And these are the photos that we took. So they're all checked. You want to make sure they all have this little check mark right here. And we're going to go ahead and click import. So that's going to kind of do its little Lightroom processing thing and bring them into Lightroom. And we're going to go to our develop tab up here at the top right hand corner. Click develop. And now we can look at our photos. So the first set of photos, because the first six are from my Sony a6500. The next ones are from the iPhone 7. So let's just go ahead and touch up these photos just a little bit. Um, I like to have the painting kind of in front of me where I can look at it and use it as a color reference. What we want to do is kind of find the one that we did the most straight on. That one looks pretty close. And we're just going to mess around with some of these settings here to just kind of make it look color-wise the way that we want it to be. So I'm going to boost the contrast just a little bit here. I'm going to crop this a little bit. So I'm going to click this crop right here just so that it appears a little bigger on my laptop screen here. Cool. Now I can see this thing a little bit better. We'll go ahead and... I mean, that's looking okay. We'll boost the contrast just a touch more. I like my colors pretty vivid because my paintings are pretty vivid. Um, let's boost the whites just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and grab our white balance tool right here, which is this dropper. And just find like a, the lightest area of the photo. Click that. 
and it just kind of takes out some of those yellows and makes it look a little bit more natural. Just a touch of vibrance. I like my stuff to be really bright and colorful. You can mess with the settings the way you want and make them look the way you want, but that's looking okay to me. So I'll just go ahead and I like to hit one on my keypad to, to rate this as a one, because later we can filter it by the photos that are rated and just grab the ones that we edited. Cool, so first one is done. Uh, let's go to the iPhone photos here. And I'm speeding this part up because this is all the same steps that we just did. Cool. All right, so there's our four photos. Let's rate the four we edited. This one we did, this one, this one. And then we'll f go to our filter here and filter one stars. Cl just double click that one star right there. So we're gonna take the two Sony photos. We're gonna click the last one and hold down shift and click the first one. Now we have both selected. We're gonna use file, export, and we're going to first name it. Uh, we'll call these Ten Hun Paintings. Because my name is Ten Hun, or Ten Hundred, and these are my paintings. Uh, we want to choose where this is going to be saved at. Uh, we'll just, for ease of use, we'll save it to the desktop. New folder, Ten Hun paintings boom choose let's also add to the title um a 6500 because that's the camera i used for these ones now uh file settings here we want this to be psd photoshop document because uh, we're taking this straight over to photoshop so we'll keep it as a psd photoshop document uh, image sizing, we don't want to resize these, we want these to be as big as they can be. And resolution, print resolution is 300 dpi, so we're going to keep it at 300. Web resolution is 72, um, or whatever, but uh, for this we want to keep it at 300. And this is actually why I am exporting the A6500 separately from the iPhone ones. going to go ahead and click export here. It's going to do its little processing thing. And we're going to select the first one and go to the second one. Hold down Shift, click. And then we're going to choose File, Export, Shift Command E if you want the quick key. Uh, we'll change this to iPhone. We'll put it in the same place so we don't need to change that. But Photoshop document, yeah, let's do that. Down here, we're not going to print these because the iPhone does not shoot print resolution photos. Um, so we're just going to drop this down to 72 uh, DPI because these are pretty much going to be like just for the internet. Export. Shabam. All right. So that's all we need to do in Lightroom. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and quit Lightroom. Command Q. And then I'm going to open up Photoshop and go to file, open, and where did I save those? Desktop, right? We'll go to the desktop, 10 Hun paintings, and these are our four pictures that we exported out of Lightroom, so let's go ahead and grab those. Open them up, they're open. So let's start with the A6500. Okay, cool. So we got this painting here, and the first thing that we want to do is unlock this layer because we're going to be making some changes to this layer later. So let's go ahead and click unlock right there. Next thing we want to do is grab our shape tool here and we're going to uh, have it set to rectangle tool. There's all kinds of different shapes you can make, but we'll choose rectangle. We're going to get uh, a, a color, a random color. We can choose blue. Uh, and then go to the top corner and click and drag this rectangle to be about the size of your painting. Boom. But we need to make this rectangle kind of see-through so we can see the painting underneath. So we're going to go to opacity and set it to like 30%. Cool. We can see through the rectangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this painting 
line up pretty darn close to this rectangle because this rectangle is perfectly straight on and our painting as we can see is not perfectly straight on so what we want to do is tr uh, go into transform mode uh, you can hit command T control T on a PC and now we can kind of transform this painting but it just moves like on the X and Y axis uh, so we want to go, uh, skew this painting so that we can skew it to make it the correct shape so now when we when we move one of these corners we're actually like whoa skewing it you know that's pretty crazy uh, so let's go ahead and zoom in here and we just want to grab the corner and line it up to our rectangle that we created yep that's that's about right and grab the corner line it up to the rectangle <clears throat> cool cool That looks pretty good, but we'll just move this in a touch, and move this down a touch. Yeah, looks good. All right, so to say yes, we like those changes, we hit enter, boom. Now it's, it's pretty well lined up here. So we want to select the area outside of this rectangle that we created and delete everything outside of there. If we just click on the rectangle layer and grab our magic wand tool, we can't do anything because this is like a live shape, which means that, I don't know, it's not a physical object that exists in the Photoshop world. I don't know how to explain it, but what we got to do is we got to like rasterize this rectangle. So we're going to right click on, on this rectangle layer, choose rasterize layer. And then look at this. Now we can use our magic wand to grab the area outside of it. We could use it to grab the area inside too, but we want to grab the area outside. So uh, click anywhere outside of the rectangle. And now we have everything selected that's not the rectangle. Um, we want to go down to our photo layer right here, the first layer, and click delete. And boom, now it's just our painting for the most part for the most part. We can get rid of our rectangle at this point. And there's our painting again. And what has happened is that outside of the area of our field of vision, there's still some of that original photo left over. So we're gonna hit crop, hit enter. And like you can actually see this gray area along the edges is the stuff that we skewed outside of the frame. So uh, just crop all that out because that's going to get in the way later. So hit enter again. Now it's, it is what it is. What we see is what we got. Let's create a white background behind this piece. Create a new layer. Hold on. I just did that without telling you guys how to do that. Click new layer. Boom. Click that layer that you just created, drag it down below the photo layer, boom. Grab the color white from your color palette up here, boom. And then we're gonna hit G on our keyboard to grab our paint bucket tool, which is right over here if you wanna use the mouse and click around. And then click outside the painting. Now we have a white layer underneath our painting. But check it out, this frame is not perfectly square. It's got some curves. It's kind of like an old timey ornate frame. And if we zoom in here, because this area kind of curved in inside of that rectangle that we created, we still got a little bit of that original wall background that does not look very good. So what we got to do here is grab our, take our lasso tool here. And lasso has a few modes. Regular lasso, you can just free draw and make a selection, but polygon lasso is my jam, and you can make points just by clicking your mouse and then double click to finish it, and that's how you make a selection on that. So what we want to do is go ahead and grab this white white wall, and this part is 
the most time consuming. If your painting is perfectly square, you don't really have to do this part. Like if it's just on a wood panel or on a canvas, you can just make sure you drag your painting like just a tiny bit outside of that rectangle. And then when you delete the area outside that rectangle, it'll be just your painting. But I figured I would shoot a like kind of a weird frame so that you guys can learn this step too because if you have that little bit of background on your painting it's going to look janky um so yeah just going to go right along the edge here and then click and make points and shaboom shabam boom got all that white area and just keep clicking. By the way, if you hit spacebar on your keyboard, it turns your mouse into a grabber hand and you can grab your canvas and move it around. Spacebar, click, spacebar, click. Come back up here and close this loop. Double click, closes it. And then we're going to make sure we're on our picture layer here because right now I'm on my background. Picture layer. And then we're just going to hit delete. And now that ugly white wall. It's gone, it's gone. So I'm actually gonna do this um, in all the areas that need it. I'll probably throw this into fast motion in the final video, uh, but I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, and we're back. That took a little bit, but you know what? Look at how good that looks. That painting looks nice. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is, well, what I like to do is I like to make my canvas a square because when I upload it to Instagram or my website, they like square things. So let's make this a square. Uh, we can go to image and canvas size or uh, option command C. Alt, Control, C if you're on a PC. And we're gonna make this a square. So my height, um, we're gonna give it just a little bit more of a buffer room there and do 15 on the height, which makes it 15 inches, and then 15 inches. That's a square, boom. Click that, cool. So now we need our background to be just a little bit bigger, so we'll go down to our background layer right here. Hit G on the keyboard to grab your paint bucket tool and click. Yeah, all white, sweet. So let's go ahead and center our painting. We'll go back to our painting layer and we'll click and drag this. That pink line up here saying it's in the center. Uh, what is that, vertically? And then boom, two pink lines, center, center, yes. All right, so that looks pretty good. And um, this is sort of like an optional step, something I like to do, but I like to put a drop shadow on there just so that it kind of like looks like it exists in a physical environment. Um, so we're going to double click our layer here. And this brings up our layer style window. And way down here at the bottom is our drop shadow. And if we turn that on, we got a little drop shadow action going on. Uh, let's do it like it's lit from the top. Like, yeah. And that looks pretty cool. You can mess with these settings and change the way your drop shadow looks and behaves, but that looks fine to me. So we're gonna click OK. And there is our uh, painting. It looks way more professional than when we just shot it hanging on the wall. It's like super square on, all straight, perfectly white background. And that's like, yeah, looks professional to me. Let's pop over to the iPhone real quick here take a look at this all right so same steps unlock this layer boom create a new layer boom use the rectangle tool grab a random color click and drag from the corner to the corner we're gonna change the opacity to 30 percent then we're gonna hit command T to go into transform mode right click choose skew and we're gonna skew this painting so that it is lining up to the edge of our rectangle. Hit enter. That has committed those changes. Click on our rectangle, right click, 
choose rasterize layer S grab your magic wand tool here W on the keyboard click outside the rectangle got everything outside of it click delete hit your crop to crop the things that's outside the canvas hit enter hit enter again all that stuff is gone now you can hide your rectangle and then Another way that you can get rid of this little white area on the outside, maybe, if you're lucky, is if you use the magic wand tool and choose quick selection. And if we zoom in here, this might work, it might not, sometimes it's a little finicky, but we can click and drag along the edge here, and it selects just that white area. Hold down shift on your keyboard, and we're grabbing just that white area, shift, drag. Shift, drag, and then delete. It gone. Shift, drag. Got it. Delete. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Like if the edge of your painting is too close to the color of the wall, um, it doesn't work so good, but it's working pretty good right now. Delete. Shift, drag. Shift, drag. This is kind of awesome. This is actually like working pretty well. This delete. Either way works. Polygon lasso tool or this quick selection tool. This way it seems to be working a little bit better on this occasion, but we got this popping into the frame a little bit. So if you switch back to your lasso tool and hold down Option or Alt on a PC, that's like the take away selection tool. So we're gonna take away from this selection right here. And now we aren't cutting into our painting at all. Delete. Go back to our magic wand quick selection tool. Delete. And finally, we are done. Boom. Cool. Let's make this a square. Center this. Cool. Drop shadow. Got it. Create a new layer. Drag it underneath. Make it white. G on the keyboard for your paint bucket tool. Click. And there is. Ooh, let's mess with this drop shadow a bit. Make it from top. And I forgot to do this corner down here. And there is Ooh, what's going on down here? There's some random little artifacts down here that are making this drop shadow act weird. Cool. Yeah, just kind of fine tuning it. Um, so there's the iPhone one, doesn't look too bad. And there's the A6500 one, a little bit, little bit better. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how you do it. That's how you Make your photos look all fancy-like. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that you will subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this, and more mural videos, and more art videos, and me just having fun and making stuff. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like, and a comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment. Thank you guys so much. I will catch you next time. Goodbye.